Good morning from the front porch office. It is Friday morning. I hope you're well. We're reading from Acts 2, 5 through 13. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts belonging, the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They're filled with new wine. So the Spirit has fallen on the disciples, and they've begun to speak in all kinds of languages. So, first things first, they are absolutely right. These are Galileans. They're from northern Israel. They're basically fishermen. They are not people who went to school. And nowhere, I don't think, could you go to school to learn, you know, uh, Parthian or, or, or Cappadocian. You know, you'd have to move to those places and live there and, and learn it by living there. So there's no there's no question that somehow the disciples happened to know all these tongues. They didn't know them. They wouldn't have known them. But it's festival time and so all these people are in Jerusalem. The Jews had been dispersed since the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem in 587 BC. You know, not everybody was taken into captivity. Some people escaped and went to Egypt or Turkey or other places, <coughs> excuse me, and in those other places they set up these communities. But they still were faithful, and so they came home as they could uh, for the festival. And there were proselytes as well. Now, uh, to be Jewish, you have to be born that way. You have to be born into a family of Jews. But suppose you were not born into a family of Jews, but you find the uh, teaching about the, the true God of Israel, to be persuasive and you want to be uh, obedient to the law, even though you're not technically Jewish. Uh, some places those uh, people are called God-fearers, and here they're referred to as proselytes. So, so they're people who are interested in and, and obedient to uh, the one true God, but who are not actually Jewish. And there are many other people there, of course, who are Jewish. And these places that are named, they're not random. You know, the Parthians and Medes and Elamites and Mesopotamia, that's all far to the east. Iran, Iraq, way out there. Judea is the southern part of Israel where um, Jerusalem is. Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia are all parts of Turkey, which in those days was called Asia Minor, and it was just a region of different little principalities and things. Uh, Egypt and, and Libya, that's the North African coastal um, countries. Rome, uh, so that's Italy. Um, Cretans and Arabians. Now, the Cretans were from Crete, that little island, and so they would be probably Greek-speaking people. Arabians would be from the Arabian Peninsula, what we call Saudi Arabia these days. Um, and everybody from all these places in the whole known world, and that's kind of what we're getting at here, the whole known world are all coming together in Jerusalem because of the festival, and they're all hearing the gospel preached in their native tongue. And they're astounded because how can this happen? And, and, and some other people say, oh, they're drunk. Well, you know, to those other people, I would say, how could you, drunk, speak a language that you can't speak 
when you're not drunk. So that makes no sense. They're just dismissive. Uh, and Peter's going to respond to all of those people um, in the section we'll look at tomorrow. But uh, what we realize today is that the Spirit, far from being sort of just random and falling on them just because it's Pentecost, the Spirit has a plan. The Feast of Pentecost, all these people will be in town. Perfect chance to convert them by the mighty power of the Spirit. And then as they go home, they take this new teaching with them and... Um, and they spread it to others. And so in one fell swoop, as they say, uh, it's not a fell swoop, I suppose, but in, in, one, in one swoop, the uh, Spirit manages to send the gospel to the whole known world. And that's a wonderful thing. And I think we can, we can give thanks to God for that. Um, the, the Spirit is active, and the Spirit is not random. The Spirit had a plan. And the Spirit sort of knew what was happening and what was going on and what what needed to happen and when. So uh, the Spirit will also work with us and knows what's needed and when. And so um, let's tune in to the Spirit, as they say, and, and, uh, and listen. And I hope that you have a wonderful Friday, and we will see you tomorrow.